Hallelujah. Have been held in your hand. Hallelujah. From the moment of the wake up. Hallelujah. Till I lay my hand. Amen. Amen. Oh, I will, I will sing, sing of the goodness of God. So my life you have been faithful. Yes, you are. So my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Somebody raise your voice. Cause all my life you, you have been faithful. Yes, you are. You've been faithful. Cause all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, my darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life, so my, all my life, you have been faithful. You have been faithful. Of the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been. All my life, you have been faithful. You have been faithful in here just past years, Lord. Cause all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hey, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life later, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running up. It's running up. Your goodness, yeah, yeah. Your goodness is running up. It's running up to me. Your goodness is running. It's running up. It's running up to me. With my life later, I surrender now. I give you everything. Let this run enough. It keeps running up to me. Amen. What a mighty God. We serve. Hallelujah. What, what a mighty God. God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore Him. Even angels bow before Him. 
What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. We are serving him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. Our Father and our God, we acknowledge that you are a mighty God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and mercy upon our lives. The fact that we are alive today is not by our power, is not by our mind. It is your grace and mercy upon us. And so, Lord God, we want to thank you for making it possible for us to worship you this morning. Lord, the time has come for you to speak to us. We prepare our hearts to receive from you. Speak from your throne of grace. Bless us immensely. Take us to the next level. And all the honor, glory, and adoration will be ascribed to you and you only. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The title of our sermon this morning is Persevere to be an overcomer. Persevere to be an overcomer. We all know that the Bible makes it very clear that if you are a child of God, you are an overcomer. But the message this morning is that for you to be an overcomer, you need to persevere. Since the beginning of this month, we have been talking about experience. And we have emphasized that perseverance is the continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, despite failure, and despite opposition. We know that in the journey of life, everyone, without exception, unless you are not a human being, Everyone at some point in life will experience difficulties. Everyone will experience failure. And everyone will experience opposition. At times, the bigger the, what you want to do, the bigger the opposition. But for you to run the race of life, you need perseverance. You need dedication to whatever you are doing. You need determination to succeed. You need endurance. And you need persistence to continue to put effort despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. Perseverance is an essential trait for every believer. If you are a believer, you must have the trait of perseverance because it enables you to endure trials and temptations on the faith journey. Because we are all taking a faith journey. The Bible, our guide, is full of examples of people who persevered. Abel was killed 
<laughs> what did he do to Cain? Nothing. He prepared his own offering and went to give it. And that is what angered Cain because his offering was accepted. Enoch walked with God. Noah was in a world where every person were, you know, engaging in corruption, in sin. But Noah stood out. I just imagine Noah. When there is no rain, there is no water. He was building an ark. I'm sure you know the kind of mockery we will have faced. See, where can this man? Is he mad? Is he well at all? You know, that's why at times when God shows you some things, when you are doing it, people around you, they will not understand. Or oh, is it Abraham? Who was called father of many nations, yet he had no kids. Or Isaac. Or Jacob. Or Sarah. Or Joseph. Whose brother sold into slavery. And when God promoted him from Pete to Potiphar's house, from Potiphar's house to prison, from prison to palace, and then he saw his brothers who sold him. You know, he exhibited some humanity. He saw the brothers. He went inside and cried. But what did he do? Did he punish his brothers? No. He did not. Because when God, pro you know, certain things that happen to you are things that God is using to do what? To promote you. Or is it Moses? Moses was born at a time where every male child is killed. But God preserved his life for a purpose. God preserved his life to liberate the people of Israel. But the process meant that Pharaoh's daughter would collect him and he grew up in the palace. Oh no, I don't know whether you understand. I don't know whether you know how, what it means to grow up in the palace. He is Pharaoh's daughter. He grew up as a prince. But because of the purpose, after 40 years, he went to the wilderness for 40 years. He did not forget the purpose for which he was created because he's now in the palace. If it's many people, he will change his name to Pharaoh's name and begin to enjoy things of the palace. Or oh, is he Esther? You know, these are examples from the Bible of people who persevere. They have unwavering faith. They were patient. They were prayerful. And they trust in God. Because an overcomer is someone who prevails over difficulties, failure, or opposition. An overcomer is somebody who has overcome something. And overcome world problems, overcome difficulties, overcome Satan, overcome sin, overcome hell, overcome poverty. An overcomer is somebody who has accepted Jesus Christ as his personal love and savior. Are you an overcomer? Have you given your life to Jesus? If you have given your life to Jesus, are you, are you still living in sin? Are you still tormented by Satan? Do you still live in poverty when you have given your life to Jesus? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 to 5, where we have read, the Bible says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone. 
How many people? Everyone, not some. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So, everyone who is born of God overcomes the world through faith. Then the Bible asks the question, who is it that overcomes the world? And it answers it, only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are an overcomer. Anyone who is born of God is an overcomer. So, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are an overcomer. But what you need? You need to persevere. You need to persevere. You need to persevere to really overcome you need to persevere. Amen? What is the importance of perseverance? Perseverance is very important in the life of a Christian. As we mentioned earlier, the Bible is replete with stories of individuals who exemplified perseverance. In James chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the one who perseveres on that trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. My prayer is that all of us will receive the crown of life in Jesus' name. When you persevere, you overcome obstacles. You become victorious. You become an overcomer. It is true perseverance that our faith is fortified. It is true perseverance that we can fulfill destiny as the journey of life is paved with difficulties, failure, or opposition. During the week, Share the story in the WhatsApp platform of a young man who is struggling. She was he was trained by the mother and he read computer science. So the young man went to Cyber Cafe to do something and he saw them struggling with something. And he went there and just solved the problem with him. And then they took his number. There is one white man who was there. The white man now called him. He said, look, if you can solve this problem, you are good in computer. I want to take you to the United States of uh, America. And you know young people, everybody want to Jackba. So Jackba just came to this man very easily. So, the guy looked. I'm sure that he's based on his own experiences. He said, this Jackba, I'm not going to tell uh, anybody. When I reach there, settle down, finish. I will let them know that I have uh, And I'm sure there are many of you who have experienced it. You see your friend. He's on Facebook that you will hear that. Uh, not like that foolish girl. Who never cross uh, immigration for baggage control? Begin like that, the the tango say he don't he don't succeed. So this young man, the the European man, the white man, arrange his visa, arrange everything for him, and then he travelled inside the plane. You know, from here to U.S. is a long journey. So you will pull your shoe, sleep. The guy pulling shoe, Reverend, sleep. When he wake up, you don't see one leg. You don't see one leg. Look for the leg, look for, look for, look for, you don't see him. 
He reached there. One thing led to the other within 24 hours. They deported him back to Nigeria. When he come, he began beating Mama. Say, Mama, see Wahala. I travel, go US. They say me come back. The mama look at him. He says, see you. Go inside that room. You will see the leg of your shoe. You think you can do anything in this world without telling me? You go US, you not tell me, me, your mama. He said, go inside that room. You go see mirror. Now there they take the money to you. <laughs> oh, hello. You know, some of those of you who think that there are no witches, there are no wizards, there is nothing. You know, there are some of you, especially the Gen Z's, the small children. You know, no, you know, native doctors, not they protect you. Eh? <laughs> you know, they go to church. You know, you only come to church on Sunday. You don't pray. You don't do anything. You think this life is like that. His own mother. The physical shoe was there. <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> Just to let you know that, you know, there are powers in this world. But God's power is more than their power. If you bury yourself in God, if that guy was serious with God, he will, in fact, the mirror will break. I don't know whether you understand that. And you are alive today. God is just protecting you. Think nobody wanted to kill you? Want to kill you? You know there are some people, Remren. Eh? They go to native doctors for protection. But many of you, you don't go to native doctor for protection. I'm not saying you should go to native doctor. You don't take God seriously. You make yourself a meat, a prey for the devil. So the boy come. The boy say he want to kill the mama. People come to hold him. The mama say, see me. You want to beat me? Come beat me. Are they here? Go inside the room. You go see your shoe for them. What am I saying? My dear brothers and sisters, Take God seriously. Because this life, there are many things. And if anything, if you run into any difficulty, change it for good. Any problem you are going through, look for God in it and change it for good. There are many people living false life. For instance, Pedro Coke. In 1906, claimed that he and three others have climbed Alaska Mount Minkley, but it was false. You know many people eh? claiming things that uh, they have not done. There are many fake Christians. You are born again into a family of Christians. You go to church every day. You have been baptized. You give offering, but the reality of your life is different. Why are you deceiving? We have seen several stories of pastors. You know, every Sunday they preach. They come and tell you, be faithful to your wife. Then when they die, we discover their wives and children. There was a time a director in the public service in Nigeria, seven billion naira was found in his account after he died. The reality of the word of God should be in the life of every Christian. God did not create you to punish you. God created you for you to be a success, for you to fulfill destiny, to live a life of victory and overcomer and bring glory to his name. God did not create you for you to live a life of struggle all your life. There can be battle but not struggle all your life. The kernel of the message this morning is to encourage you to persevere. I don't know what you are going through, but whatever the difficulty you are going through, whatever the failures you have experienced in life, 
whatever the opposition that is raised against you, the assurance from the word of God is that you are an overcomer. So this morning, I want to encourage you, number one, to rely on God's strength to persevere. Don't rely on your own strength. Rely on God's strength. Because in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So there is nothing that you cannot do. In our dictionary, we should delete the word impossible. There is nothing impossible with God. Number two is that you need to rely on the hope of eternal glory. We have a hope that whatever difficulties, whatever problems, whatever issues that you are experiencing today cannot be compared with the glory that is to come. In Romans chapter 8 verse 18, the Bible says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed there's a glory coming. Tell your neighbor, there's a glory coming. You know, you need to have a focus that this life is not ending here. There is another life that is coming. We have a place that we go after this. And the glory of that place cannot be compared to anything that is happening right now. That is why, number three, you need to build endurance. If you know that glory is coming, whatever you are passing through, you know it's what? It's temporary. It's temporary. You know, I recall very clearly that when we were growing up, you know, we had challenges. But this challenge, that's why I'm so, I, I, I really feel for young people today. You know, during our time, you just know that only what you need to do is to go to school. Eh? That if your parents, even if they borrow money, the moment you finish from uh, school, your problem is uh, over. That's why it is during our time. When we're going to school, we had challenges. But 1986... The moment I left university, after the three months of the day from June to September, I knew the problem was uh, over. And from that time till now, there is no time that I have not earned money. But today, you finish school. For some people, 10 years, no job. But it should also tell us to reset our brain. That school today is not to look for job. Because I always say it, if you look at it, just check around you. Who are the richest people? They are not job people. Just check it yourself. Check the richest people around you. They are not salaried people. It's not job. So understand the time. The Bible tells us the sons of Issachar, they understood the time. And because they understood the time, every other person were under them. That's why you see today, there are people who went to university with third class, past degree, who understand the times, and they are employing those with first class and to one. Tell your neighbor, understand the times. So build endurance through faith. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36, the Bible says you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. <laughs> I don't know whether even any human being can promise more than what God has promised. I don't know whether you understand that. When you look through the Bible, 
The promises of God in the Bible are huge. In fact, one of the passages say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, he say, eyes had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them. Do you understand what that, that means? That what God has prepared for you, if what? What is the condition? If you love him, eyes have not seen it. So all the riches you have seen, <laughs> eyes have not seen what God can do. He said, ears have not heard. Ah, you know what you have heard now? You know the stories. Even heard from social media. He said, neither has it entered into, oh my God. I'm sure you know. There are many of you. You have not been to Kotonu, but in your mind, in your dream, you have entered London. <laughs> oh no, you have entered the US. Ah, there are many of you here. You have entered the US. What the Bible is saying that even those things that has entered your mind, those fantasies, are too small for God to do. So, my dear brothers and sisters, build endurance. But more importantly, connect with God through prayers. Connect with God through prayers. You know, yesterday we had our prayer retreat. And if you were here in the prayer retreat, you will go home with what? With greater assurance of what God can do in your life. I want to encourage you. Don't be a Sunday, Sunday Christian. Because you know, one small thing can just destroy you forever. Look at this boy now. He has been to the U.S. <laughs> but what happened? The mother sent him back. But if he was strong in the Lord, he would have been protected. I pray that the Almighty God will help each and every one of us to connect with God in prayers in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. What this passage is saying that look, don't worry about anything. Anytime you have problem, what should you do? Go to God. You know, I've always wondered. I say, people who have no connection with God, I don't know how they deal with problems. I don't know whether you understand. You know, I don't know how many of you saw that video. One woman from a story building. Eh? Just came and jumped. Suicide jump. And came down and died immediately. Jo very tall building. If you don't connect with God, if you have problem, how do you deal with it? You know, what the passage is telling us here is that when you bring Present your request to God. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. We do what? Guard your hearts and your mind. I, I'm sure those of you who pray will know. Now, after praying, you have not seen the answer. But what will happen? You have peace of mind. You have, even that peace of mind is more than money you at times, it's more than the answer. If you don't have God to run to, who do you run to when you have problems? You know? If you look at life, do you know that there are some problems? Eh? You will look left. You will look right. You will look front. 
you will look back and what? There is no solution. You know the solution to that, that problem? No solution. But when you pray to God, even if you are not seeing the solution, the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, will become your portion. And that peace of God is more than anything that you can think of. Number five, support each other to persevere. Whenever anybody is in problem, help. Am I communicating? If you cannot help, don't add to it. You know, many times I see people. Somebody is coming to beg. Get out from there! Call that is us. Get out, you idiot! If you cannot give, wind up your glass and go away. Ask your neighbor, do you know what it takes to beg? I challenge you to do experiment. Eh? One day, just go and meet people. Say, please, I, they stole my purse. I want transport. They will look, you say, 419. Even if it is uh, genuine. But thank God, nobody needs to beg these days unless they steal your phone. Even if they steal your phone, you will see, uh, you remember somebody's phone number. Unless you are a useless person. <laughs> Hello? I, I'm serious. If, as you are now, eh, you are in this church now, you go outside, they steal your purse, they steal everything. There is no one person you can call to send you 1,000 naira, you need to check your life. I don't know whether you understand. It's not people that are bad or you are a useless person. You can't see one member of your church. You can't see one member of your family. You can't see any single friend to say, look, I am stranded. You are a wicked person. Check yourself. Carry, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, it says carry each other's burden. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. So the law of Christ is not just about speaking in tongues. You know, every time, when, you know, you go on evangelism, it's good. You go for worship, it's good. But what? Carry each other's bodies. Carry each other's bodies. Look for people who are suffering and help them. In your families, focus on the people who don't have, not on those who have. Carry each other's burden. In this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. And number six, maintain a positive perspective. Maintain a positive perspective. This life is good. Even if things are hard. God is good. We serve a mighty confess positively. You go about each time a person call you now nah, wahala. I did so far I won't die here. Hmm? You go look for a job. You reach there and say, oh God, I beg I need this job. I need it badly. Very badly. Hmm? You see, my father has 50 children. And I'm the first one. Me, myself, I have 25 children. And all of them, no one is uh, working. Please give me this job. If you are CEO, will you give that person a job? Yeah. 
if you go and meet the man, say, look, Oga, even though I did not go to school, but I can drive. And I drive where I have a good record of driving. If he's cleaning, I can clean. Whatever job you give me, you will be impressed with what I will do. Who will you give out of the two? Maintain a positive perspective about life. This life, nobody owns this life. Who? And God is a God of miracle. He changes things. He promotes a nobody amazing somebody. And even if you are somebody now, don't be arrogant. It's foolish to be arrogant. Because all the things you have can, you know, flood can come to your place. Even flood not did it before. You know, be, uh, earthquake is not happening. Earthquake can happen. You know, there are villages, a whole village We sink. Thunder can strike your house. Thunder don't normally strike houses, but it can strike your house, and before you come, everything is uh, destroyed. Worse still, you can be stricken with illness that all your property will become uh, useless. So humble yourself. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, he said, Therefore we do not lose heart, though utterly we are wasting away. <laughs> Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. Focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Things can change for you even now. And God has a power to change things. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to know this morning that you are a child of God. You are an overcomer. But you can only be a true overcomer through perseverance. Trust on God's strength to persevere. Rely on the hope of eternal glory. Build endurance through faith. Connect with God through prayer. Support each other to persevere. Maintain a positive perspective. Somebody say, I am, I am an overcomer. Say it confidently, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Say, I am, I am an overcomer. And this morning, we want to pray briefly. Yes, we want to say, God, help me to persevere and be an overcomer. Let's be on our feet. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah.